Let's all stand. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name. He has the outer courts into the holy place. Pass the brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face. In front of crowds of people, the priests of whose new praise, I hunger and thirst, but only down one place. Take me in the holy of holies. Take me in. By the flag of the land, take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, but my lips, here I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now the courts into the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Me by the crowds, the people, the priests who sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found one place. The end of the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold of my lips. Here I am. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Worship of tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way tonight. Speak to us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Praise your name, praise your name. Out the courts into the holy place. Pass the praise and altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people. The priest to sing your praise. I hunger and for your righteousness, but it's only found one place. Take me to the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take the cold of my lips, here I am. Hallelujah. To the holy of holies, take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the holy of holies, take the cold of my lips. Here I am. Hallelujah. Lord, my kindness. Here I am. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Praise your name, praise your name, praise your name. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord Jesus. I want to welcome you to Apostolic Family Life Center right here in the heart of Beverly Hills. We're located at 3 West Lemon Street. My mind's going blank. 3 West Lemon Street, Beverly Hills, Florida, 34465. Telephone number to reach us, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Right here in the office, there's always a staff member that's here and in the phones, whether you have a prayer request, a need, or just need to speak to someone. 
Telephone number is 352-513-2108. That's 352-513-2108. Amen. I am excited tonight to bring to you the Bible study of Into His Marvelous Light. We're continuing our series in soul winning, having a soul winning attitude. Amen. This is the next step. We learn all about what we need to do, why we need to do it. Now we need to get about our Father's business in heaven. And we're going to all learn this Bible study tonight. Once we finish it, we will be able to order some of them, physical, uh, what do you call it, copies of it. Just to let you know, this Bible study is $1. So I would suggest if you're going to teach a home Bible study to someone, Take one for yourself and then uh, get two. Take one for yourself and leave one with them so that they can follow up afterwards. And not too long after the home Bible study, you want to have them, you want to definitely pray with them and you want to get them to, up here to the church so they can get uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. I am going to be working on getting um, our getting some sort of bastard here. But if not, that's okay. We have plenty of waterways surrounding the entire Citrus County. There's plenty. There's Hernando. There's uh, Homosassa Springs. Uh, probably ought to stop. stop uh, probably ought to stick to uh, Hernando because after the Homosassa Springs, there's quite a lot of wildlife out there. So the gators and all that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, want to thank all y'all for being here tonight for making your sacrifices. I know there's a lot of other things people could be doing on a Wednesday night. But I'm glad I'm here. I, I actually didn't get a chance to go home today. I had uh, my plate full today, and I'm playing race to beat the clock so I can finish by Friday, and maybe Pastor can take a day off. What do you think? you think I need to take one off? I think I do. I've been going full throttle. But that's okay. It's, it's awesome, awesome, awesome working in the house of the Lord. I wouldn't trade nothing for it. If I could do this, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But you think about it, we are doing it 24 hours, seven days a week, if you think about it, because you're always supposed to have that frame of mind, no matter who you run into in your everyday life. You have to assist in the Bible, be ready in season and out of season. You have to be ready for that soul. When that soul comes across your path, you want to be ready for him. Tell him about Jesus. Amen. I wanted to make sure everybody got their uh, copy, uh, Apostolic Doctrine Reference Guide here. This will answer a lot of your questions that you've had. I just got these in the other day in the mail. And also I passed out some of our tracks that we're going to be using for outreach. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I would encourage each one of you. I'd like to, uh, on this wall over here on the left side as you come in, or it'd be on your right side when y'all come in. But I passed out some uh, prayer uh, requests. What I would like to do, I want to create a prayer wall. I'm going to try and get some kind of paper, something fixed up. Sister Briggs, I'd like you to help me come up with a prayer wall to cover it. Like, uh, tell me, give me some ideas what I can put up there. And we're going to post all these prayer requests. On the back, if you hold up, uh, if you look at, on the back of these, right here on the front part, it says prayer requests. On the back part, it has a victory report. What I would like to do is everybody... Post your prayer requests. We're going to post them up there. Okay? I could get these things for $1.99 for a couple hundred. $1.99 for a couple hundred of these things. So that's cheap. But what I want us to do, I don't want it to just sit in there for kids to draw on you and things like that. I want to actually post a prayer request, put it on that wall, and, and when you know that prayer request is answered, turn it over and put a praise report on there. We want to, we want to let people know this is a church where miracles are still being answered today. This is not a church that does not care, that only cares about ourselves. If we do, we need to shut the doors, cut the lights out, and go home. This church cares about people. This church loves God, and we love people. No matter any walks of life, no matter what we got to go through day in and day out, we got to love each other. That's what that unconditional agape love is all about. Amen. But if you need more of these, let me know. Um, there's some in each one of the pews now, and that, those little pockets, I put some in there. So if you need extras, help yourself. I got plenty, believe me. <laughs> and I uh, also want to make sure everybody got, uh, I ordered the smaller ones because the bill size ones 
are, uh, what do you call it? Um, they're more expensive and you get less in the box. I got 200 of these, but it almost cost me to get 100 of the other ones. The other ones, you know, are the big ones, the full size bills. But you know what? Roll your bills up and stick them in there. You know? Yeah, just fold them in half and stick them in there. But these right here, <laughs> excuse me. These right here, uh, it has on there where you put your name, address, and amount and check weekly or, or monthly. Some people prefer to pay every week. You know, some people, do, uh, like what I used to do, I paid mine, I, I've been paying mine monthly. But what I used to do, I used to hold out, I, I used to take out my money, the tithes for the whole month, and, and split it four ways. If there was like four weeks in a month, then I would uh, just give that much each week. I'd put it in an envelope or something and just put it aside, put tithing on it, put it in my drawer somewhere and just take out one-fourth of it each week and put it in the office. If you want to do that, or if you'd rather get it out of the way and do it the other way, you could do that. Amen. The tenth is holy unto the Lord. Leviticus 27.32. Amen. If y'all need extra of these, let me know. I, I, I ask that you only take, uh, if you're going to do it monthly, just take one a, month, uh, one a month, but if you want four of them to do it weekly, you can do that, whichever way you want to. The program that we have, Church Tracker, it does, uh, you know, do it either way. I can put it in. It doesn't matter. I can do it daily with them. It doesn't matter because it gives you some running total. So, at the end of the year, it prints it all out. Everything is awesome. I mean, God has really blessed this church with the tools and resources to do what most churches that have thousands of members do. We've got those tools and resources right here. We've got our own uh, online streaming radio station. We have our own uh, streaming television uh, site. You know, there's no reason out there. I mean, if you're out there listening to broadcasts and you don't have a, a website, if you don't have a streaming television site, or, or what, and I know a lot of you don't like me saying television, but what I mean, if you don't have a way to broadcast your services and get them out there to the millions of people out there, call. Call here at the church. Call me, and I'll help you. That's what I'm here for. It's this is not I, I'm not I'm not just a, in my own little corner and just want to uh, take care of my own little church. I want to help every last one of you. If you're an apostolic Pentecostal church and you believe in the truth, oneness doctrine, then you know I'm here to help you. Whatever whatever I can do to help you. If you need a website, I have those tools too. Amen. God, uh, I thank God uh, that God blessed me with the uh, not the two more horn, but I thank God for blessing me with the tools. And, and the experience and, and the qualifications to be able to do this. I'm all about saving souls, whether it's this church or helping a church down the road. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let me go ahead and make sure I got this set up here. Praise God. Is the house cool enough for y'all tonight? Amen. The entrance of thy word. Oh, excuse me. The name of this Bible study tonight is Into His Marvelous Light. This Bible study is basically can be given to anybody, no matter what uh, walk of life they come from, no matter what what they what denomination or church they're part of. You could you can teach this. Um, Really, almost within one hour. It's almost like a one-hour Bible study. You literally can do it on your lunch break. You, but I would encourage you to split it up. The reason why is because it's quite a few pages, like 16 pages. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Psalms 119, 130. Psalms 119, 130. I'm going to make sure that I keep y'all up to pace with me too. And bring this one up. In preparation, before you do this Bible study, the following Bible study was prepared to explain the plan of salvation in a simple one lesson condensed form with a teacher to guide the discussion or by self-study. This website that you see here, right? I mean, not website, but this uh Bible study that you're looking at right now, it's actually located on one of our sister sites, part of Apostolic Family Life Center. So you literally, it's still good to get, leave a copy, a physical copy with them, but you can literally take your laptop, and if they've got inter internet 
connectivity, you could actually uh, teach this Bible study right from your laptop. Turn it around. Like if I turn this around right now, I got, I'm seeing the same thing that y'all got there. But you literally could actually teach it right through that, you know, and go right along with it while they're reading in theirs. I still encourage you that when you go teach this home Bible study to take a physical copy to give them so they can follow along with what you're doing. Okay. And, and also leave it to them because there's always something that, you know, they might want to read back up on. Leave a copy with them. What's a dollar? Like, you can't even get a cup of coffee. I don't think a McDonald's for coffee anymore. I mean, for uh, a buck anymore. So, okay. If desired, it can be divided into two parts by taking a short break between each of the two 30 minute sessions. A recommended place for a break is after the section into the Gospels. Okay, that's a good point. Probably a good halfway point to split it up is where it says into the Gospels. Each participating student should have have a copy of the study along with a Bible. Preferably, you want them to have the King James Version because that's what we read out of. In this church, you know, I stick to what God wrote originally. I, I, I'm not, you know, all this other man-made stuff, it's okay. They basically mean the same. They say the same thing, but, you know, I want to stick to the main main Bible. And you want to make sure they have a pen or a pencil. Okay? You want to have a copy of the Bible study, because they can actually fill in the answers as they go. Uh, a Bible, a pen or pencil. As each scripture is read, the student is asked to become involved, sometimes by completing a fill-in-the-blank or responding to a question. Additional comments and supplementary scripture references designated throughout the text by small numerals and parentheses are provided on page 14 for further in-depth study at a later time. That's why it's important. Do not leave without putting one in your hand because it does have additional scriptures that you don't go over, you know, that they can read in their own time. May we also suggest that all participants take a moment to ask the Lord's help always, always. What's one thing you should do before you even start your Bible study with someone, a home Bible study? Raise your hand if you know. What's the very first thing? Prayer. Yes, ma'am. Definitely. You want to pray for God to open up our minds, bring us together, unite, that type of thing. May we also, okay, and uh, help us understand this word as King David once did when he prayed. Open thy, thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. May God bless you as we travel together into his marvelous light. Ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 and 9. Praise God. All right, you stand right there if you want to do, take care of that for me. We'll stand over here so they can see it, okay? Right, right here. Okay. Stand right over here so that way you're going to go back for it. Right there, okay? So everybody can see it. Can you see it, Sister Zoe? You see that right there? Okay. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. When walking out of a dark room into the sunshine, light can be blinding. As our eyes become accustomed to the light, we can see more clearly and enjoy the scenery that surrounds us. Likewise, when we look into the light of the scriptures, the brightness of truth can sometimes hurt. I don't know how to drink water tonight. Anyway. Likewise, when we look into the light of the scriptures, the brightness of the truth can sometimes hurt. However, as our spiritual eyesight becomes adjusted, we can enjoy walking in the light. This Bible study is designed to allow us to walk in the marvelous light of the word of God. We will be journeying into the scriptures by imagining we are back in the days of Jesus and the apostles, listening to them teach and preach the plan of salvation. In order to do this, we will be careful to rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15. 2 Timothy 2, 15. By concentrating on the highlights of the three main divisions of the New Testaments in chronological order, including the Gospels, which covers the words and works of Jesus Christ, the Acts of the Apostles, that's number two, cover the actions and the preaching of the apostles, and lastly, the epistles. They, number three, they're covering the letters written by the apostles to the churches that they started in the book of Acts. Next slide. 
We believe the scriptures are divinely inspired and of no private interpretation. 2 Peter 1, chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Therefore, every effort has been made to present the pure word of God without it adding to it or taking away from its teachings. Deuteronomy 4, 2. Deuteronomy 4, 2. Proverbs 30, 5 and 6. Proverbs 30, 5 and 6. Just write this down and you can, follow, uh, you can read up on them later. It is not our intention to diminish any personal relationship you may have with the Lord. Neither do we desire to convince you of our own personal ideas or creeds of any denomination. We simply desire to share the truth as it is written in the Word of God. Only by claiming the Bible as our sole authority can any of us be confident of our salvation. For it is, it is the Word of God and not traditions of men that will judge us all in the end. Next slide. The Gospels. By the way, this slide that they have on. By the way, the slide that we have. Uh, I mean, this uh, book, the Bible study we have on online. It actually has where they can fill in the blank, actually type it in like a PDF or a Word document, and they can print it. So they'll have the answers already in there. John one, one through five and fourteen. John chapter one, verses one through five and fourteen. The blank which was in the beginning and was God became flesh. Jesus is the living word of God. I'll be right back. I have lost my Bible again. That's not good. Can you go get it? Let that be a lesson to all the MITs and the pastors out there. When the pastor has lost his word, something is wrong. Amen. My son is going to get my Bible now. Please bear with me. Anybody would like to answer that first one? You think you know the answer to it? That first, uh, first one up there. The blank which was in the beginning and was God became flesh. Jesus Christ is the living word of God. Go to, if you go to John 1, 1 through 5 and 14, you'll be able to find the answer. Let me see if y'all know the answer. Pastor would know if he had his Bible. <laughs> That's terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. What a embarrassment. Okay. I don't know what I'd do sometimes without my son. Sometimes. <laughs> He's going to be my gopher tonight. John chapter 1, 1 through 5 and 14. Here he comes. Amen. Thank you, son. I think I got to get it. The other day we was talking about me losing my keys and stuff, and I got them on a lanyard. I think I, I wonder if they make a, a lanyard for something this big. Does anybody know? Let me know if you if any of you out there broadcast, listen to the broadcast, has any ideas for pastor. Let me know. I'm open to suggestions always. Okay, let me go to John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John comes right after that one. All right, chapter one. It'll actually leap out at you. You're actually you're actually reading part of the scripture, if I'm not mistaken. All right, one through five, and then fourteen. Okay, I know the answer. How many wants to take take a shot at it? Right, by the bridge. You're right. Give him a cookie. <laughs> All right, awesome. So if you want to, you can um, that's why it would have been nice for me to give these to you, but but this is basically just introducing this to you. Everybody will be getting physical copies of it. All right, next one, John 1 verses 11 through 13. Stay on the same chapter we was at. 
John 1, 11 through 13. I'm going to read it. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. All right. If we believe in him and receive him, Jesus gives us power to become sons of what? Anybody know? Sons of what? Amen. Give him another point. Woo! <laughs> Need to hand out prizes tonight. By a supernatural birth. He spoke further about his new birth one night to a ruler of the Jews. Now let's go to John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And I'll read that too. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. I'll tell you what. Let's get everybody involved tonight. We're going to read the first two scriptures. Go ahead. On chapter 3. And read the first two scriptures. Just two. There was a man of the Pharisees named Benedictus, the ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know not thou art a teacher, faith of God, but a man that do these miracles that Brother Briggs, can you take the next two scriptures? Three and four. Amen. I'll read the next two. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Sister Briggs, can you take the last two, seven and eight? Go ahead. You can read it for us, brother. Right. All the night that I said to thee, you must be born to me. The wind bloweth for a sister, and thou hearest the second thereof. I cannot get the cannot sit away it came from, and whither go. So is every one that is born to me. Amen. The Lord told Nicodemus that everyone who wanted to see or enter the kingdom of God was be to be born again of what? Two things. Amen. Boy, I tell you, y'all, y'all, the rest of y'all ladies now, you, you're getting uh, run away here by Brother Briggs. You, y'all got to start teaming up on him a little bit now. Come on. All right. John chapter 3, 16 and 21, or 16 through 21, excuse me. And I'm going to read these this time. You want to read a couple? Go ahead. 16 and 17. Go ahead, Sister Briggs. There was a little girl that he gave his outlet to God's son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish. Everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Verse 18, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and man loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Sister Zim, can you take the, uh, the last two verses, 20 and 21, please? For everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light, and neither cometh to the light, that he might not have the light, lest the deeds should be. I love hearing a page turn. <laughs> but he that doeth truth. 
things may be made manifest, that they are brought into God. All right. We was reading from John chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. Jesus also told Nicodemus that whosoever what in him shall have eternal life. Yes. Wow. Come on, ladies. What's going on here? Well, you letting them in? You letting I was going to say believe, but I wasn't sure. Okay. All right. You can try it the next time. John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. This good tonight? Amen. All right. Go ahead, Sister Rita. You said you had it, didn't you? <laughs> you want me to do it? I'll do it for you. He that believed all things, the scriptures, I have said, the of his belly shall through. Amen. One more. Can you get the next one? Here we discover that if we believe on him, we will receive his what? Power. Okay, what is that power, Caleb? What's it called? Holy what? Holy Ghost. Amen. Very good. Awesome. We find that scripture belief is more than just a change in the way we think. It also results in a scriptural experience. Faith motivates us to obey, and obedience brings God's acceptance and blessing. Now, let's go to uh, John chapter 12. Let's go over John chapter 12, then I'll tell you what scriptures. That way we get everybody the same place. John chapter 12. Verses 35 and 36. I'd like to have, let's see, Sister Briggs, you do uh, verse 35. Brother Briggs, you do verse 36. Sister Ronnie, you do 42. And I'll take 43. When Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while we, walk while ye have the light. Lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in the darkness know not whether he's got go. Amen. For the breaks. Why ye why ye have light? Why ye have light? Leave in the light that ye may be the children of light. These things speak Jesus, cause it, and get out of himself from it. Sister Zim, verse thirty seven. Oh hold on, excuse me, forty two. Amen. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. How many of you know a lot of uh, ministries out there that love more about praising themselves than praising our God? Yeah. Wrong or right, Brother Briggs? Okay, amen. It's, it's wrong the way they do, but it's the right way to do is praise God, not men. Not bring glory to yourselves. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yep. Today, just as in Jesus' day, many believe on him, but they will not what him for fear of what others will do or say. What is the one thing that they're telling us here that they won't they won't do? Starts with the W. Worship. Yep. They want them to worship. You can close. That's all right. Hey, you still got it. You're still ahead. So don't worry about it, Brother Riggs. That's right. <laughs> All right. Can, are y'all seeing uh, John 12, or do I need to go up with the slide a little bit? Go down just a little bit to where it shows John 12, 44 and 48. Okay. Thank you. All right. John chapter 12, verses 44 and 48. Now I'm going to give everybody a break because Pastor's going to read this time. 
44 through 48 of chapter 12. Make sure everybody can see that. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light unto the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same judge him in the last day. In response to their fearfulness, Jesus warns that his what will judge us. So we must be careful not to reject it. Rather, we should believe and obey it, no matter what others say or do. What do you think they're talking about there? Jesus warns that his blank will judge us. Father, same thing, basically him, that he would judge us. We're going to be judged in the last day, basically what that means. Go to the next slide. Stop when, uh, when you get, uh, I want to make sure the questions are still showing at the bottom too. All right, and step away so others can see. Thank you, Caleb. John 17, verses 17 through 20. John 17, verses 17 through 20. Let me turn there real quick. I've gotten out of the uh, camera here for a second because I'm turning in my Bible. But I will be back. 17. Okay, here we go. Brother Briggs, take 17 and 18, and I'll do 19 if you want. Hold on. Are you in chapter 17? I think you're in the wrong chapter. One more copy. Yes. <laughs> Leave it to our wives. Amen. <laughs> yes. Chapter 17, verse 17. Bless their souls, oh, Father Briggs. We love them to death, don't we? <laughs> Amen. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. In Jesus' prayer for his disciples, just before his crucifixion, he said God's word is one. He also prayed for us and all those who would believe on him through the apostles' word. God's word is what? Amen. That's exactly right. Truth. To find out what the apostles' message was to be, let us read about what Jesus told them to proclaim. The setting of the following Great Commission scripture in Luke 24, verses 45 through 49, is just after the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection, and just before his ascension into his heaven. Luke 24, I'm going to go back there. Um, 45 through 49, Luke 24, and I will be reading that for you. Is everybody okay? I didn't get any words back, I guess you are. Then. Amen. Okay. Luke 24, 45 through 49. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power 
from on high. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behoved, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. His name is what, church? What is his name? Jesus. Amen. Amen. Among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power on high. I got a question for you. Did the apostles preach the message Jesus commanded them to proclaim? Did he or did, did they or did they not? How do you know? Somebody want to help him out? Right. That's the key. They followed what God, as God guided them, just like this word of God right here is inspired. It was a breathed word of a living God right here. All these that are in here, the Lord basically moved upon him and they wrote what he they told him. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Out of the mouth of babes, nine years old. What is out of the mouth of babes? Out of the mouth of babes means that one day all of us older ones here got to move aside and let the younger generation continue to lead. You are the leaders of tomorrow. That's exactly what that means. Amen. Somebody's got to pick up this banner. We don't, we're never going to lay it down, but we're going to wear out one of these days. This is a fleshly body. This fleshly body was never meant to contain all the power and spirit. It was never meant to contain that. Not our fleshly body. We're not talking about Jesus now. How was the promise of the Father fulfilled? How did it get fulfilled, Sister Briggs? But how, how did it get fulfilled? What had to happen to Jesus first? Let her answer. <laughs> How did what had what she have to do, Sister Briggs? Thank God for husbands, right? Amen. Same thing. Thank God for the wives. Thank God for husbands. Amen. He had to go to that cross. If he hadn't gone to that cross, we wouldn't be where we are today. Amen. That's right. Amen. So true. Next slide. Let us continue our journey into the Word of God by seeing what was preached and what happened at Jerusalem. Y'all bear with me. We're getting down the road with it. We're doing good. The Acts of the Apostles. That's where we want to start in. The Acts of the Apostles, page 8. Acts 1, 3-5. This is my favorite part. I mean, it's not really a favorite part of the Bible. You should... All of them should be your favorite. But let's go to Acts 1. Caleb, okay, you can get in your Bible too and help read along if you want. I'm calling you too. Acts 1, 3 through 5. Acts comes right after uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Yes. Can you read those? You're going fine. Acts 1, verses 3 through 5. Go ahead and read all three of them, or two of them, whatever how many it is there. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things concerning to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, com commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, he have heard of thee. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. 
Amen. As we enter the book of Acts, we discover almost immediately that the promise of the Father is the baptism of the what? You had it on the tip. You get ready to say it. Baptism of the what? Amen. Bingo. Very good. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 17. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 17. I'll start off, and when I get tired of reading, I'll have somebody else read. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 17. And when the day of Pentecost, ooh, this is a good one. Y'all ready for this one? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush of mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this noise was abroad, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Rhonda, read, uh, Sister Rhonda, or Sister Zim, excuse me, read uh, 8 and 9, if you will. Like, let's be the best you can. Be the best you can. It's okay. Pastor doesn't know them all either. Just like it sounds, sound of the uh, sound. Yep. It is. Mr. Pania. Cappadocia. It's okay, you're going fine. Pontus. Okay. Perigia in Egypt, oh, excuse me, Perigia and Pamphylia um, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Saran, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Cortes and Arabians, we do speak them, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Brother Briggs, can you take 13 and 14? Sister Briggs, verse 15 and 16. For these are not drunk, as ye suppose, seeking it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet of Job. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I'm guessing it was probably either 3 o'clock or in the middle of the day, about halfway point. That's what I'm thinking. If we go by our clock, I would say 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. I don't think it was in the morning. Because it was talking about how it was a later time in the day, you know, not that I know, you know, time that they usually drink or whatever, but, you know, it could, that particular thing could be any time, but I would say it was probably about the middle of the day, around three o'clock. When the apostles were at Jerusalem, they along with many, they along with many others were joyously filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other what? Great, awesome. As the Spirit gave them utterance. The inspiration to speak. The amazing, the amazed onlookers from many nations who heard them speaking with tongues ask, what meaneth this? Then Peter explained the promised coming of the Spirit 
and went on to preach about Christ and the original apostolic plan of salvation. Church, this is where it all began. Is there with the Yeah, he was already gone by then. Yep, he was already gone. Did, did Edward Clayson make it 12? No. There, actually, uh, I've been told, I don't know, I have to research this, but the 12 disciples, I don't believe, were the original because there was women, men, there was other disciples, followers. Anybody to me that follows Christ was a disciple, wouldn't you think so? Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. But now all of that was done away with now. Now, women, speak your mind. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Speak your mind. I believe uh, women can be just as much disciples and followers of Christ as, as the men can. Yeah, yeah. because Jesus used the some of the women. Yep. A couple of Marys, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Y'all are doing good. Boy, we're getting really into this. Acts 2, 36 and 39. Caleb, you're going to read that. Yep, Acts 2, verses 36 through 39. I'd like you to read that, please. Amen. Amen. How many have heard that verse before? That's good reading, Caleb. When the people who heard Peter's words believed that Jesus Christ was their Lord and Savior, they were sorry for their sins and asked Peter and the apostles what they should do. Peter replied by preaching the message Jesus commanded to be preached in Luke 24, verses 45 through 49. In light of this, consider the three elements of the plan of salvation that P Peter preached in verse 38. Number one, what did we talk about before that's got to come for somebody to become uh, totally saved? Number one, first thing they got to do is what? Repent. Repent. Number two, we're yep, the remission of their sins got to go through the baptism of Jesus' name. No other name, church, Jesus' name. That's what we're that's right. Amen. Receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost is number three. You got to have all three, church, before you're saved. All three. All three has got to be done. You know, you didn't let me read 39, right? Go ahead and read 39. No, don't worry about it. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Church, You've got family members that are unsaved. This is for them too. It's not just for us. Amen. It's not just for us. Just as we receive the Holy Ghost and we're baptized in Jesus' name, your, each one of your family members can experience the same experience. Amen. Acts 2.38 is the fulfillment of the two new birth requirements Jesus mentioned in John 3.5 that were necessary to enter the kingdom of God. Number one, water birth equals baptism in the name of Jesus. Spirit birth, there's two births, water birth and spirit birth. Spirit birth is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so I don't know that speaking in tongues. Amen. Are you on the next slide? Go to the next one, please. Now let us look at other examples of people being born again of water and spirit as the word Jesus gave his apostles continue to be preached throughout the book of Acts. Oh, I like this. It's got bullet points. So you could do this. Uh, it's interactive online. They can actually do it online and then they can print it. 
So it shows the answers on it too. And they don't really, it helps to do this, but, but this is good because you could send them right to it. Actually, you know, this might sound strange. I mean, it, it's better that you be right there in person. But what happens if somebody had to work or they had to do something or go somewhere or they had to go out of town? Well, what's wrong with doing it on the telephone? I know there's some right now that would say, no, you need to do it in person, but I'm telling you, get them wherever you can get them. If you can get them on the telephone, send them to the website, send them right to where this Bible study is, and you look at it on your computer and teach it right to them, right there. Then they can print it. They probably got a printer hooked up to the computer. So. Philip preaching to the Samaritans in Acts 8. Let's go to Acts 8. This is going to be probably going to have to split this up and do bingo. I'm going to try it. I would like to finish this out on this one part. Let me see how far we got. Let's go. Uh, let's, can y'all bear with me and do two more pages? Y'all okay? Yeah, is this all right? Okay. Amen. Go to Acts 8. Turn to Acts 8, Kate, because you're going to read some too. Some people say when they experienced joy or when they believed in Jesus or when they were baptized, they were automatically filled with the Holy Ghost. But what does the Word say? Go to Acts chapter 8, 5 through 8. 5 through 8. Read it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Number 5 through 8. Did they have great joy? Yes or no? Amen. They sure did. Brother Briggs, can you take Acts 8 12? they believe in Jesus Christ? Yes or no? Yes. They sure did. Is it all right? Okay, let's see. Acts 8, 14 through 17. You can be in the next slide. Uh, 14 through 17 of chapter 8. And I'll read those. Are you there? Say amen. Amen. All right. Sister Zim, you all right? You don't need a glass of water or anything? Okay, just check. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Number 17. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. When, were they baptized in this name, yes or no? Yes. Did they receive the Holy Ghost as a separate and distinct experience? Yes, yes they did. How do you know? What, what demonstration showed you that in that verse, in those verses? Thank you so much. Yes. Amen. Now, was it them giving them the Holy Ghost, or was it God? No, it was God. Amen. Amen. Church, and y'all out there listening to our broadcast, this is a hand. This is just anointing oil right here. This is anointing oil. Everybody watching church, 
This is anointing oil. This is a hand. Neither one of these can do anything without the power and spirit of God Almighty. This is just what it is. Anointing oil. Remember that. Amen. Very good. Peter preaching to the Gentiles in Acts 10. Let's go over to Acts 10 now. We got one one other page here, uh, uh, page 10 to do, then we'll be done for this evening. Chapter 10 of Acts. Some people say being religious is enough, or that spirit baptism evidenced by tongues was only for the day of Pentecost. If the Bible says this is true, then it is true. But if the word shows us through Cornelius' experience that it is not true, then it is not. Are we on, is it on the slide on verse, on slide nine? Okay, thank you. All right. Acts 10, 1 through 2. How about you take that, Sister Briggs? Chapter 10, verse 1 through 2. Very good. Italian. Was Cornelius a religious man? Yes or no? Okay, good. Yes, he did. Amen. Preach it, brother. Go ahead. I just want, I'm gonna go sit down and let you have the mic. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, brother Briggs. All right, five and six of that same chapter. Who wants to take that? Go ahead. Yeah, read five and six. And I'll send me to Joppa. Joppa. Joppa and call one for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He will get with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee that what thou, thou artest to do. Okay. Did God have more for him to do? Yes or no? How do you know? Tell me why. Okay. So, even today, sometimes we don't know how to handle our problems. Sometimes we don't know what to do. Isn't it better if you, instead of going to somebody else, go to God, straight to God? Man? Try God first. Like I said before, this is just a hand. This is just anointing oil. I'm nothing, but God is. Before you come to me, you go on your knees and go to God first. I'm just a man that he uses. I'm just in his vessel, okay? Go to God first. Then you come to me. Because by that time, if God really spoke to you, you'll get your answer before you come to me. All I'm going to do when you come to me is I'm going to go to God and pray about it and say, help brother so-and-so or help sister so-and-so. That's all I'm going to do. Amen. Too many preachers uh, and men of God today are trying to put themselves up so far up on a pedestal, you know. Every one of us are human beings. And yes, a pastor can fall too. Any pastor that tells you he can't, it's elevated him itself up so high, I would question. Amen. Acts 10, 44 through 46. Acts 10, 44 through 46. Into his marvelous light. When Peter, I mean, while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which heard the word. And they 
of circumcised circumcision which believed were astonished as many as come with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Did they receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues after the day of Pentecost? Yeah. Then why, church, do they say today, tongues is only happened back in the day of Pentecost? This right here, this one, these two or three verses right here, tells us clearly that they spoke in tongues after the day of Pentecost. Okay? One thing you need to remember, tongues is your communication of your spirit with God. There's no school out there, church, that can teach you to speak in tongues. There's plenty of them out there. School of the Holy Spirit this, school of the Holy Ghost this, but it's all false. The only way that you can speak in tongues is when, you're, when you get the option and if God's spirit touches you and he speaks your spirit, that portion of you, that's connected to God is the one communicating to God. And that's exactly what it is. It's your spirit talking to God. There's two parts of you, remember. Two parts. And until the day you die, they're going to be warring against each other. Your flesh, this right here, remember my hand? Your flesh and your spirit. Which one is God's? Which one is going to go with God? Your spirit or your flesh? Spirit. Amen. Awesome. That's right. Acts 10, 47 through 48. Acts 10, 47 through 48. Who would like to take that one? I did? Yeah. I read 44 through 46. Yeah, but you went on and read Oh, I did. Okay, let me answer that question then. Did they still have to be baptized in Jesus' name? Yes or no? Yes, because they didn't have the Holy Ghost. Did they still have to be baptized in Jesus' name? Yes. Yes, because they didn't have the my question to you is what are you waiting on? Just think it. Keep it to yourself. Don't answer. Okay? All right. Can we go to slide 10? If you can get that last one. This is going to be where we stop. I know we didn't get to the part of where they said it's midpoint, but this is good for tonight. How many of you are enjoying this? How many, I've got more of these studies. More, plenty more of these. This is just one of four or five different Bible studies. But this one is good because it, you can do it in one, one setting with the people. But you can see how it can be kind of long. But really, we haven't even been going at it for barely an hour. Paul preaching to John's disciples in Acts 19. Let's go all the way over to Acts 19. It's going to take you a little bit ways. Acts 19. Many people who are believers have not heard, even heard about the Holy Ghost that is promised to them. Believe it or not, there are still people here on this earth that has not heard about the Holy Ghost. Whose fault is that, church? God's? Ours. Amen. Thank you, Brother Riggs. Also, some people say it is not necessary to be baptized or rebaptized. If you were baptized by John the Baptist, would you think it would be necessary to be rebaptized using a different baptismal formula? Believe it or not, when John baptized, he didn't baptize in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. But when Jesus came, there's identity there now. You understand what this is all about? It's not just baptize this way, baptize that way. There is a name now. Jesus. Name of the Father is Jesus. Name of the Son is Jesus. Name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. And all these three are one. Amen. Others say it does not matter what is spoken when you're baptized. If the Bible indicates it does not matter, then it does not matter. But what if the Bible shows us it does matter? Go to 19, 1 and 2. 
19, 1, and 2. Sister Zen, would you like to read that for me? Hollows. Corbin. They were believers, but had they heard of or received the Holy Ghost yet? No, they haven't. That's right. Do you think there's still people on this planet that hasn't heard of it yet? Yeah. Amen. I believe it too. Yep. I believe that's the only thing that's holding the Lord back from coming back. When everybody has heard this gospel once, remember, we're only promised one time, not 20 times. Okay? Some of us have been in the church pews, fat as calves, been on that baba too long. You got to quit get, having that baba. That baba needs to be taken out of your mouth and you need to be eating some meat and potatoes. That's right. And we're getting there. We're getting closer. But I still believe there's some that haven't heard it yet. That's our job. Okay, did we read 19, 3 through 5? You read that, didn't you? Oh, no, you didn't. I'm going to read that one this time. 19, verses 3 through 5. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Listen to this, church, unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance. He didn't even use the titles, church. He just had, had a, a baptism under repentance. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. See, he was telling them, he was baptizing for repentance of the one that was coming after him. That's the one that they needed to be baptized on. Did those baptized by John the Baptist have to be rebaptized in Jesus' name? They were. They did. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. So, my question is for you. If there are those out there in other faiths that come into the truth today, they understand this one this message, and they were baptized in Father, Son, Holy Ghost, did they need to be rebaptized in Jesus' name? Yes or no? All right, next one, Acts 19 and 6. Acts 19 and 6. Brother Briggs, would you like to read that one for me, please? Amen. Was receiving the Holy Ghost accompanied by the initial evidence of speaking with tongues? Amen. Amen. That's true. We found that the apostles pre uh, preached the following salvation message. This is what they said. The life of Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. Repentance toward God and believed in Jesus Christ as Savior. Baptism in water by immersion in Jesus' name. And lastly, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, which was accompanied by the initial evidence of speaking with other tongues. It's important, church, that you know that you got the real thing. We're not talking about Coca-Cola here. We're talking about Jesus Christ. You got to make sure that you've got the right thing. If you didn't speak in tongues when you was praying for the Holy Ghost, Pastor Zim's telling everybody out there right now, you did not get the Holy Ghost. 
if somebody is up there playing in the excitement or, or whatever out of it, they tell you, bless God, you got the Holy Ghost. If you didn't speak in tongues as a sign, you didn't get the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry, you did not. But if you spoke in tongues, you received the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's where we're going to stop today. We will pick up next week on the epistles next Wednesday. Okay? Let's all stand. And Sister Zam, you dismiss us in prayer tonight. Let's all stand. Come on up. Come on up front. Thank you for your word and help us to have a good night and a good day tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God, church. Ain't God good? All the time. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. God bless y'all, y'all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.